My name is Carlos Abrego and I will present you some perspectives about the area of fine fighting in Europe. I work for Pegasus, our group, as Chief Strategy Officer. Pegasus has accumulated experience in aerial fine fighting since the early 70s, headquartered in Spain. Today we operate a fleet of roughly 100 aircraft in the southern part of Europe and South America. The European Union is a mostly continuous piece of land, more on a threat following Brexit, of about 10 million square meters. That include a forestal surface of about 180, 200 million of hectares. Sweden, Finland, Spain, France, Germany, Poland, probably concentrate two thirds of these hectares, due mainly to climate change and the increased uh, interest of modern societies for rural environments, which implies at the end of the day, more presence of people in the forest. Forest fires are an issue that is no longer exclusive of Southern European countries. It is true that these countries, talking about Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece, still suffer, we suffer, most of the incidents in summer. But the problem looks like definitely spreads to the centre of Europe and the north of Europe. The European Union is very aware about this and has started to take political initiatives to allocate funds to tackle the problem. However, what is the situation today? How does the picture look like today? First thing to remind is that the European Union is not the European, let's say, the United States of Europe. The only truly common policy led at European level is agriculture. Taxing, international affairs, justice, and of course, environmental stuff are nationally budgeted and regulated only under a certain oversight of the European Commission and the European Parliament. Therefore, policies, funding for forestal firefighting uh, are fully uh, national, 99% national, not pan European. And the so called European market is just an aggregate of national markets, let me say this way. So how does the aggregate of these markets look like today? Only Southern European countries have allocated up so far uh, budgets for tendering aircraft on a standby basis. This is making sure that the helicopter uh, is there, ready to provide services by paying a fixed fee, a fixed amount of money during some months in summer. In rough figures, there are about 150 helicopters standing by for firefighting in Spain, 50 in Portugal, 80 in Italy. The rest of the continent seems just to be awakening at the sight of the climate change evidences and the increasing number of fire events showing up every day in summer across the TV news in Europe. But today, the number of resources available in these countries for forest fires are still very few. Only as samples, uh, I've known about 40 helicopters total in France, probably 20 in Germany, 15 in the UK, six in Sweden. Most of them, an immense majority of them, without a standing by contract, just listed to be contacted on a call when needed basis, paid per hour, if they haven't got anything better, anything else to do but fight the fires. On the regulatory arena, uh, EASA must share, well, EASA is the equivalent, let me say into brackets, to your FAA. EASA must share its regulatory activity with national civil aviation authorities, very well established in every country. Please let me underline that these are not sort of delegations of EASA at national level, like FAA delegations in the American states, but sovereign agencies funded by member states and integrated in the state structure. General rulemaking process in Europe is quite complex, also in aviation. Let us just say that in practice, the ASA establishes thresholds, a common round and minimum requirements. But from that point, every member is somehow able to restrict 
operations. Hence, for instance, is regulated at the ALSA level, but incorporate domestic peculiarities uh, under the supervision of the level playing field of EASA that is concentrated in harmonization uh, the different rules among the countries. However, member states have kept in exclusivity the authority to regulate and supervise certain activities. And I'm afraid, yes, we got to the point. Aerial firefighting is one of them. Therefore, with regards to the activity we are discussing in this conference, basically, Europe doesn't exist as a single body, I'm afraid. Europe is an aggregate of countries that face the problem isolated. National aviation authorities that grant national authorizations mandatorily required in national tenders, but useless anywhere else. Is there any common ground to obtain different national licenses reasonably? No. The standards vary very much from country to country. There is no validation process in place. As a matter of fact, as far as I know, except for one non-Spanish uh, company that got a Spanish AOC, national AOC, no one in Europe holds a national license out of its own country. It is funny because of one of the foundational principles of the European Union was the free circulations, free circulation of goods and services. In aerial fighting, an Italian company that could perfectly do business in Spain, in theory, without any kind of restriction, according to such principle, in fact, cannot effectively bid a public tender issued by the Kingdom of Spain if they haven't got a certificate issued by the Spanish Civil Aviation Authority. Of course, the customers in Spain, furthermore, not only require holding the Spanish AOC, but also having Spanish-speaking pilots, for instance. Say, in practice, if you're an American company of helicopters thinking about uh, operating firefighting in Europe, you will be probably able to organize maintenance reasonably under a single part 145 uh, rule um, and hire mechanics anywhere in Europe. True. But if you want to fly, that's another story. Then be ready to think about getting a number of different AOCs, manage a set of different operations manuals, hiding pilots locally, it doesn't matter if they don't speak English, they are not going to use it. Struggle with different FTLs, training, SMS requirements, etc., 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 dictated by every country. From the economical point of view, isolated markets with a limited number of customers and providers trying to oscillate between domestic oligopolies and atomized markets. A limited amount of customers squeezing budgets offered to operators competing basically in price until some of them are not just viable, fall down, get nervous or acquired. Afterwards, a scenario with a reduced number of offers tends to pull off in price up again. In the meantime, the problem is that there is no room for investment, innovation, efficiencies related to critical mass. At the end of the day, room for value creation. Such unstable markets subject to commoditization of services, low number of demanders is rarely attractive for investors. So the vicious circle is at the end of the day complete. Furthermore, how much knowledge, valuable experience gained during decades of operation are we just throwing down the drain? Can Germany or Sweden get Italian or Portuguese operators to share their background, improve capture best practices, racial operational standards, uh, safety standards, enrich a holistic European solution? I'm afraid the only answer today is no. Germany or Sweden will have to learn from scratch, go through their own painful learning process, as the southern countries did back in the 80s or the 90s, and the system is not only economically inefficient, as we have just said, operations performance is also heavily affected. But let me be a bit optimistic here. At the end of the day, concerns about climate changes, forest fires, etc., etc., jumped to the political arena uh, not long time ago, also to the social agenda. 
awareness about the problem is rapidly increasing. The European Helicopter Association, to which I represent here, is very actively working at all instances to change the course and make Europe aware that one of the key principles of the Union, again, the free circulation of goods and services, is not applicable in practice to our industry. We aerial firefighters know how to do the job and will remain keen, ready to contribute to the solution of this increasing global problem that doesn't know about national borders. Thanks again, thanks indeed to HAI for paying so much attention every year to this industry and for sharing this occasion the stage with us in Europe. We look forward, by the way, to meeting you soon in New Orleans. In the meantime, stay healthy and fly safe. Cheers from Spain.